Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. Grandma, what is new with you? Nothing. We're in the city. It's been a beautiful week. Thank heavens we're getting a beautiful uh, fall day. And actually, this week is the end of summer, officially. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm ready for fall. I've changed over my closets, got all my winter sweaters ready. Uh, gray pants, black pants are coming out, replacing white and navy. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Um, and uh, I love a new season. Yeah. It's, it's new beginnings. And the only thing I, and I, the leaves haven't started changing yet. So we're lucky. We have another couple of weeks for that. Mm-hmm. And it feels good to be back in the city. Like, I feel like I look at my calendar and I'm not like, Oh, then I'm going to go to the Hamptons and no, then this or that. A lot, like, lot we're less just, driving. Yeah. A lot less driving. I'm so happy about that. I mean, yeah. there's nothing good about that trip east. So, um, no, but, we're but just the traffic here in now, New York you know? isn't so good either. Oh, yeah. It's honestly <laughs> terrible. So, but uh, uh, hopefully the United Nations is over this week. So, mm-hmm. we'll have less traffic going um, uptown and downtown and we'll get on with our business. But we had a great time uh, in um, the meatpacking this weekend. And for those yes. who might have seen, some of the pictures you posted we really had a great lunch and we walked around the area down there it's Mm -hmm. so beautiful near the high line and the whitney museum and everybody should do it yeah there were a lot of people out and about oh my gosh good people watching it's great not only people watching it makes you the city feel so alive when you go to different neighborhoods that you're not familiar with that much and you see what's going on in those areas and the activity yeah so that was really fun i loved it i'm pretty familiar with that area i feel like i'm there well, you're there a lot. I'm not there that often. So yeah. it always is a treat for me. Yeah. Um, so to get ready for our guest this week, uh, well, we have Carrie Burke on, who's actually been on our podcast before. She came on last year. Um, she is an influencer. She's a writer. Um, she had co-authored multiple children's and young adults novel series um, along with her mom. And that was the Cupcake Club Fashion Academy and Ask Emma. And she also had her style website, Carrie Chronicles. But now she has her new book, My Real Life Rom-Com, How to Build Confidence and Write Your Own Relationship Rules, which is available now. It came out this past Tuesday. Um, so to get uh, prepared for her, I want to talk about... Uh, A CDC report in February of this year found that nearly three in five teenage girls in the U.S. felt sad or hopeless. One in three uh, considered attempting suicide. That's 60% increase from a decade ago. So thinking about this generationally, Grandma, like was this discussion ever present about mental health and anxiety, especially when it comes to relationships um, for you, or do you see it coming up more in the last few years? I can honestly say, Kim, growing up as a child in a suburban area of New York, it was never discussed. It, it what might have been, it was certainly uh, there uh, behind the, the scenes, but nobody ta- talked about mental illness. And there were some suicides um, uh, during my childhood that I, you know, we didn't know was suicide. We all of a sudden, the person just died and, and you know, they made up excuses why they died. Um, but it was always there, but not as prevalent. First of all, I think, um, I think the media has created a lot of issues for young people today and they're striving for something that is not realistic. Uh, you know, I, I we've discussed this very often. I don't think some of the dating is realistic. I don't think some of the educational goals are realistic for everybody. And appearance, like some, and the appearance, way someone looks. Exactly. And that we're looking for uh, role models that are really not role models. My role model was gold in my ear. I mean, you know, or, or, or Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You're so it, perfect. You wanted to be a lawyer well, and not an influencer. Or a politician or, or somebody that was going to do something for society. Uh, there was no, we didn't know what an influence it was, Kimberly. There was no such thing as that. But, you know, there were, there were always issues. And I think um, Carrie's book will talk about what's happening today. Yeah. It's not like zero being like no mental illness to like suicide. No, of course not. Of course, there's a huge spectrum in between and everyone d- probably deals on some level with something. Absolutely. So it's like people are functioning every day with these things, but you can... But some people are overwhelmed. Yeah, and you that's can, what happens. Yeah, and you can and be it, like in therapy, or like it's not only like you're medicated or you're not. It's like there's a whole 
spectrum of these kind correct, of things. Correct. So we're going to get into a little bit of that with Carrie and talk about the book. So hope you all enjoy. Carrie, welcome back to Excuse My Grandma. Second time on the podcast. We haven't talked to you since March of 2022. Uh, Grandma Gail and I recorded a little intro before this, but we're excited to talk to you, get into the book. So welcome back. Thank you. This is my favorite podcast. Oh my, my gosh. I'm so happy. That's a really amazing compliment. Thank and you. I don't listen to podcasts really. So <laughs> you're like, for all, all of the ones that I listen to, which is just yours, we exactly. like <laughs> we like you for that. We like you for that. We need one more fan. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, so just to remind our viewers, tell us your age, relationship status, and where you live. Yeah, it's different than last time. So we definitely have <laughs> oh, to. Yeah. So I'm 20. I live in New York City and I'm in a relationship. Very nice. Um, so I guess the last time we talked to you, you were 18, 19? Yeah, March, 20, 20, 20, 20. March 2022. I was 19. Okay. Was 19, yeah. Teenager, now you're an adult. No so, longer a teen. Crazy. Okay, so I want to talk about the book, My Real Life Rom Com. Love the title. Um, tell us about what the book is about and what inspired you to write it love the cover yeah Nigel Barker shot the cover I was fangirling so hard I feel like he did such a fantastic job so fun yeah so my real life rom-com I like to call it you know a Gen Z sex in the city so it's like a memoir manifesto about my experiences in dating as a teenager young adult and I talk about like, each chapter is dedicated to a different guy that I've crossed paths with. And I talk about like my adventures in dating, my misadventures in dating, all the mistakes I've made along the way, what I learned from them. And it was very important to me that in this book, I wasn't like being very dictatorial, like telling people who to date, how to date, but instead just presenting my experiences and the things I learned from them and letting people take what they will. Because you really just learn the best through experience. I feel like if I'm just giving you a list of dating advice, that's not very exciting. There are already so many of those out there written by experts, which are great, but I feel like there's nothing really like this out there, at least not that I've seen very often. So I wanted to fill that void. I feel like it's something that teenagers can really relate to. I think a fun gift for moms to give their daughters and you know read with them. It's a fun conversation starter. It's really just, you know, a fun, entertaining book with some heartfelt, vulnerable moments that you can take away. Sounds great. That is a great gift. Great holiday gift. I yeah. Like the idea. Yeah. Um, wait, so I have so many questions about your experience writing it. Was it like you right after the dates with these guys or the experience with these guys, you were writing your personal journal or was it after the fact reflecting on all of these experiences in order to write the book? So most of them were written pretty close to the moments themselves. And you can kind of tell in the book because the details are so vivid mm -hmm. and, and they're very real. Like the dialogue is so specific. Yeah. And it's just, it's true. Like I, I wrote a lot of it down like the day after some of these dates, because a lot of the experiences were like weekend flings or like a first date gone wrong mm -hmm. I feel like those types of experiences I just sat down at my computer right after and just started typing away in terms of the more long-term things like there was a guy I was talking to for eight months and then we met in LA for the first time and that day I sensed something was going downhill and I knew it was going to be great book content and that was <laughs> not going to turn into something so I literally like went to the bathroom during dinner and I texted one of my best friends and I'm like you need to keep a list tonight for me like I'm going to text you under the table like you're going to take little notes for me that's so and, funny like just just in case like this goes wrong and it went very wrong that night and literally after after I'm not going to spoil what happens in the chapter mm. but after everything went down and the guy left and I knew I was probably never going to see him again I was very upset. I was in tears. I took out my phone and I voice memoed on my phone for like an hour. Just like, okay, here's everything that just happened. 
I do the exact same thing. You really <laughs> never invested. The, did you had you ever met this young man? No, eight, it was an eight month relationship. Over the phone. No, she no, had no. Never no. Met in person. Yeah, she did. What do you mean? Oh, you have no. met in person. Oh, I, right. thought, I thought it was all about texting. And no, it was and, all about texting. You were right. It was. I am right. Wait, you you were texting for eight months? Yes. They had never met. They had never met Kim. You're missing the whole chat. What experience? I mean, what advice would you have given Carrie? Well, I would never text for eight months. So that would be, you know, my, you know, she and I are on a different dating page. Wait, um, okay. So <laughs> neither, neither would I, but it was the pandemic. Right, oh, right, right, right. And he lived in LA. Right. And yeah, I lived I in New York. Right. So we couldn't travel. It was long distance. But those things rarely work out. I mean, I yeah. can just tell you from experience, they just don't work out. They just don't work out. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I just needed something fun to sustain okay. the yeah. pandemic. So it was like FaceTime dates. And then finally, exactly. a chance to meet in person. And I was like, all right, this is my chance. See if anything is going to come of it. It was just very awkward. Yeah. Like yeah. there was a lot of tension. And then that night, it was just like, I don't know, it was super weird. I don't want to say exactly what happens, but. Okay. I whatever, know. whatever is we feel, we, we feel for you in that situation. And for the fellow, I still think it's very, it goes both ways. It's very hard to have that kind of buildup. Yeah. Then, anything person, is going to fall short right, exactly, of someone exactly. you made up in your head in your for eight months. It is chapter, I'm looking right now, it's chapter yeah. six and seven. He has a two oh, part. Wow. Oh, two, two chapters, chapters for this guy. <laughs> Um, He's the only one with two chapters because the first one is like FaceTime dating right. and everything that came with that. And then the second chapter was when we met in person. It was okay. an entire day. Okay. Like it's everything that went down that day. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited to read. So I have to ask, I know it's only been out for a day, but have any of the guys you wrote about reached out to you yet? Not yet, but I have posted like a bunch of promo and yeah. stuff. And I think one of the guys like, commented on something at one point like someone I hadn't heard from in oh, oh my god like four years five oh years gosh. and like doesn't follow me on Instagram or anything and just like commented to say congratulations <laughs> and I like messaged my friend and I'm like he knows <laughs> little does he know you don't put anybody's name in any of the chapters it's all I, I it's all Names. Yeah, I course, deleted course. the comment, so nobody exactly. expects anything. I deleted exactly. the comment on my post. Oh, didn't reach out. Like I've been so careful yeah, about you have to be. hair That's color change, like eye colors. Are oh, changed. interesting. Very, very subtle things that like only I know or like. Uh huh. No, I've gotten. I think I got like random messages just from one of the guys, like trying to spark conversation, and I just like don't answer. Good idea. Over the past. I announced my book in March. It's happened like over the past six months, like sporadically. I just get like random messages from a guy. Like, I like your t-shirt <laughs> or like, I don't know, like I'm going to be in New York. Like, huh. congratulations, I don't care. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're on to better and bigger things. Yeah. I feel exactly. like I, any guy that I would have dated if I came out with a book like this would message me and be like, am I in the book? Like, I think people yeah. make things about themselves and it's not about them at the end of the day. It's really about your growth. Yeah, exactly. And how you learn from each experience, which I really firmly believe as we're dating earlier and dating more seriously earlier, each thing builds on the other until you realize now sort of I'm an adult and I can have the equipment to make proper decisions. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all about decisions on where you think the good, guy lies in your life um yes. and get rid of the the bad stuff it really is a self-love journey right. in this book like yes it's it's fun you talk about the guys all the time mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it's about like, me and my own growth and mm -hmm. what I learned like this is it's not just a book about like my exes it's a book about like adulting right and mm -hmm. how complex that can be the last chapter of my book, I, instead of dedicating it to a guy, like dedicated to myself. And I talk about like, yeah, I dated all these guys, but at the end of the day, like I just needed to take a step back and focus on myself and like what it means to love myself first. Mm -hmm. And that's the conclusion I come to at the end of the book. And that's, it really like brings everything full circle because that's what I was kind of training myself to do all along mm -hmm. in this book. I was mm -hmm. just learning to love myself. Now, I want to ask you something on a almost on a little 
tangent yes. because I was listening to something this morning on the news. Do you think, because you were a teenager, basically, when you were doing this dating, you were not an adult yet. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the, the phone and your um, social media had a lot to feed into the dating experience? Um, do you think this because we never I never had the phone and I never had all this pressure from social media. And as certainly as a teenager, we, you know, we used to play spin the bottle and, and that was it. Uh, now relationships as teens are much more serious. Do you think that you can blame any of your the issues that you went through on trying to deal with social media? Yes, I think it almost got in the way of everything from like different angles of my life mm -hmm. whether that was like dating a social media guy on a social media tour and like all those guys for the most part I don't want to make a generalization right. most of those guys are like full themselves like mm -hmm. their job is literally to like be a thirst trap online right. and right. yeah it's turned out badly but I kept coming back to them because they were hot and it was fun to date a guy with millions and you were in that world at the time I was in that world. I loved it. Like when you're on a social media tour, when you're touring the country with someone, like it's, it's fun to attach mm -hmm. yourself to someone. That's what it was at the end of the day. So that obviously was like not good. Even when I was dating, like, you know, common guys, like the common mm -hmm. man, I feel like there are a lot of people who look at a successful young woman or someone with a social media following and just get scared. Yeah. And like Kim can probably like relate to this too, but like, if you're like, dating around and like on your dating app profile it has like your Instagram and they click on your Instagram and they see you have a following right or mm -hmm. something going for you get intimidated they get intimidated it's awkward like the number of times I had guys slide into my DMs like oh my god you're so cool you have such a big following whoa mm -hmm. like not hi how are you like hi where are you from no just hi you have a big following yeah or even like on a first date when the whole conversation becomes about your job mm -hmm. and you're like why like we could talk about other things as well and like I don't want to talk about my job the same way you probably yeah. don't want well some people do like to talk about it a ton but um, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and also it's a new industry that a lot of men, but men are in it as well. So it would be from the other side, women don't understand it either. It's a new industry that has to be sort of explained. This is a business. This is yeah. not just about taking pictures. Right. I mean, you know, you can take pictures and have fun, but if you utilize, if you're doing it for uh, monetary um, outcomes, it's a business. And um, it's a new thing that people have to understand is the wave of the future, just like AI is going to be the wave of the future. If we might not understand it all now but you know five years down the road this is going to be just like working at Goldman Sachs I mean it's not it's really no different it's yeah. just a different it's a different path that people take that's exactly it that's what I always say or I was used to say to guys I was dating um it's just it's a business at the end of the day like mm -hmm. the guys don't understand that they they see the following they think right. it's all glitz and glamour and all of that but someone who's able to sit down and like be patient with you and like actually listen to like why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like it's more than just the clout and like building my following. It's really business and like a way of like earning money. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's something that really stood out about my boyfriend from the beginning. So when I mentioned mm -hmm. the following, it wasn't just, you know, oh, that's so cool. Whoa. Like, who have you met? Have you met any cool celebrities? Like, no, it was you know, why, how'd you get into it? Why do you do what you do? Mm -hmm. um, like, how does the whole industry work? Like just genuine interest in like learning about yeah. like, the industry. Like that's, that's the difference. That's like a level right. of emotional maturity. Mm -hmm. As opposed yeah. to, I, I tell a story in the book about like a guy I went out with from my school who on the first day asked me for Addison Ray's phone number. Oh my God. That's a like influence, big oh. influence. Yeah. Carrie, how has your boyfriend uh, reacted to the book as well and having to read some of these dating stories that you've gone through? It's, it's all the emotional maturity. Like it's so evident that like I'm with such an emotionally mature man and it's very clear, I think to me, as he's read this book, he was mm -hmm. the first person to read it like at the same time my mom read it he read it yeah okay oh, wow that's fair and how old is this gentleman that you're going out with now he's 25 all right so he's a little older and he has yeah. so that that's a good thing because he yeah. has a little maturity behind him mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I think women mature like much faster than men. Yeah, for sure. So mm-hmm. it's just, it's very clear. Like I, when he read it, I said to him like, look, it's an open conversation. These were experiences I went through as a teenager, but still, if there's something you want to talk about, if there's something you want to bring up, like always open communication, right. just come to me. And he was able to, to laugh at it, to enjoy it just to look at it and be like, oh, some things never change. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's so nice. It's a wonderful novel for young people to read and understand that dating is a process. Yeah. And that is really the answer. It's not, you know, unless you, you could, there are some people at 14 find their one love and they, and they stay with them forever. But in most cases, that's, that's the rarity Mm -hmm. uh, that you really do have to learn and you learn by experience and hopefully not bad experiences for the most part. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, we don't want to say that everything that you go through is wonderful, but hopefully it wasn't, you know, heart-wrenching you you learn you develop you grow and uh, that's what I think is so good about this book a lot of it is you know raw and vulnerable and sometimes it's like hard to show that part of myself to people like I said yesterday I was at the book signing and like I I'm gonna be so like I was having a really hard time like reading stuff for my book and like talking about it out loud because it's one thing to write it like I'm a writer but it's another thing to talk about it out Mm -hmm. loud like I'm I'm very comfortable on like a podcast especially comfortable with the two of you but if you're looking at like a crowd of people and strangers right and and an interviewer is asking you like you know what was it like getting your heart broken for the first time what was it like experiencing anxiety like it's just very very hard like Mm -hmm. something like I just love writing like I'm I'm a poet like I put it together and I make it look pretty and I put it out there like this like I I don't really like talking about it as much so it's very difficult but I think like I don't know going back to your question you need to no I feel for you in this like it's it's so relatable you're putting your innermost thoughts and feelings out for people to read and writing it down it doesn't leave your laptop or it doesn't leave your journal but then it does and like I I can't imagine (laughs) that feeling but I think it's going to be extremely rewarding and you'll see that over the next now that the book is out that people are going to find it relatable and say how much it's like they've enjoyed it and I think that'll bring like as scary as it is I think the good feelings are going to outweigh that like anxiety hopefully thank you yeah I think it's it's going to become more comfortable as it goes on I mean yesterday at that book signing I think it was just like my first one I was yeah. like, absolutely terrified I didn't really like open my eyes and like look in the crowd and realize like my boyfriend was sitting there my mom was sitting there my dad was sitting there the support like, the support system my support system was there and I don't think I really like opened my eyes and saw that I was just so like focused on not screwing up and I think it's I just gotta like sit back relax right. exactly back. enjoy it is a hard work is done already so you've yeah. done so now you just have to enjoy it and mm-hmm. my one advice to you is don't read the comments <laughs> I, I say this to Kimmy all the time there's always going to be a disgruntled reader or it's somebody who hasn't even read the book that's going yeah. to be annoyed with whatever topic you're you're talking about. And I really advise you not to look too much at the comments because um, they, they are from people who are not in a happy place. I think many times some people are well wishers, but there are so many people out there that have so many other issues. They're worried about the air, the soil, the, I don't know, uh, their neighbor, um, that they don't give you a fair chance. And uh, so I, I would advise you not to look at the bad comments. Most yeah. of them will be good. I'm sure, Carrie. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> no, they will. They will. On I anticipate I was on a, a reality show like two years ago right. and I wrote a a chapter about like what really went down right. in the reality show. Mm-hmm. So I'm anticipating some bounce back from that right. because that was obviously a lot of drama. Yeah. But I'm so happy I did it. Got it out. It's so freeing that that's out in the world now. Like even if nobody reads it, if nobody reads this book, it just feels so good that that's out there. Like the truth is out there. There are stacks of my book with that truth, like in the middle of us. Yeah. St- it just feels so good. Well, that we talked about on the last time you were on the podcast. Yeah. The reality, <laughs> the reality show. show. Yeah. I remember that distinctly. And I've always said that to Kim. They've got to make drama. I put it in the book. This is as real as it gets. This is what happened, okay. you know, behind closed doors when like mm-hmm. the cameras weren't rolling anymore. 
right. and I was upset. I was crying. I ripped the GoPros off the wall. This is what nobody saw. Right. Right. Very, very happy. I actually got this out there. Right. Mm-hmm. Great. We touched for a second about anxiety um, and the pandemic and all of that. Do you think that your generation, our generation, is ex- well, it's a little before your generation? Yeah, you're a little younger your than me. Generation. You're a little younger than me. I'm more millennial, but I'm on the cusp. Right. Don't, okay. don't help me. No, no, no. Um, I mean, yeah. But do you think, right, the the missing prom, missing right, graduation, right. all of that kind of stuff, do you think that plays into the anxiety and depression and and things that we're seeing amongst your age group? Absolutely. I think for me, 2020 was extremely hard. I was turning 18 for the first time. I was graduating high school. Like you mentioned, no prom, no graduation. It's Really, really difficult time. I got my diploma in the mail with like a little sprinkled yeah, confetti so inside, rabbit. like a folded diploma, like folded in half with a little confetti in an envelope. <laughs> that was it. That was very all, like, depressing. It was, it was very, sad. it was very, very sad. It really was. And you it don't was. realize it, you know, people go about their lives not realizing that a young person at 18 or 19 is really traumatized by not having those kind of rituals that mm-hmm. have been in our life forever. And uh, we can't downplay the effects of that too much, but uh, you know, it, it really was a very hard time. Yeah. yeah. It, it was really hard. I think I didn't realize how it affected me mm-hmm. until like, I, I talk about this in my book. Like one night I'm sitting on the couch and all of a sudden I just like, can't catch my breath. And I was like, oh my God, I have COVID. And then we go to the, we go to like the COVID testing center and it's not COVID. I'm like, all right, what now? <laughs> What's wrong with me? And my mom's like, you just might be anxious. Like, right. It's a really hard time. And to me, like anxiety was like the butterflies I get before a test or something. Right. Like there's, I got no education on mental health, anxiety in school ever. So I didn't really understand what I was going through until I was, you know, feeling all this, all these physical symptoms for the first time. And, you know, these mental compulsions, like telling me like, you know, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. And like, just would not stop like, you know, trying to put me down. So I feel like I was like in my own head, just like constantly. And I didn't know what that was. I thought like there was something seriously wrong with me. And because of that, like it took a long time to reach out out to tell, Mm -hmm. to get out of it, but to like, to Mm -hmm. tell my parents that I wasn't okay to tell, you know, to tell them I wanted to go see a therapist. Like they had been telling me, but like I was scared because I feel like there's such like stigma surrounding like, therapy and like people with mental health issues. Like I thought the second I asked for help that there was that was like admitting there was something seriously wrong with me. And I feel like there there came a point where it just like came to a head and I was like, okay, like at this point I just like miss being happy and I wanna I wanna fix this. Mm-hmm. So I, I got into therapy and I think the most important thing I learned was that there is no like fix for it like I I was searching for something that wasn't there like I was searching for a light switch to flip that that, like made me suddenly not anxious anymore but I think once you're educated on it and you go through anxiety for the first time like there's no turning back Mm -hmm. and like at the end of the day like it's kind of a good thing because it just makes you like a more emotionally rich wise individual like I feel like it's like welcome to adulthood yeah totally agree And then what was the experience of like managing that in your personal life, writing a book, and then also having millions of followers and having to navigate like the fun and the business of all of that at the same time? Yeah, that's a great question. I think at the time, like I was blowing up on TikTok and luckily, like I wasn't getting much hate online. So social media was my escape. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a, like a serotonin boost. Like I, I looked at it, serotonin, right? Is that the right Yeah, word? yeah, yeah. I'm like, endorphin boost. Okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah. I would like, I would retreat into the internet and there would be like millions of people online, like telling me they loved me. And yeah, they were like, validating you in, in an right. a time when you weren't feeling validated. Right, like I couldn't validate myself. So I would look on the internet and I'd see right. like, oh, my videos are getting millions of views. Like, I'm so cool. So, that, <laughs> but at the same time, like that, that didn't really matter. Like that was just like kind of a, a hobby that I focused on. But at the end of the day, when I turned my phone off and I was with nothing, I was just with myself. I didn't feel secure in myself. I felt like scared. 
all the time. Even like I would always like retreat onto my Peloton bike and I would get off and I would like pray like one day I'd get off my ride and everything would be healed. And it just, it wasn't like everything would go back to how it was. So for like six months, I just had a really, really hard time just like praying, like it would get better. Just, I wasn't like talking to a lot of people. Nobody knew except my parents. Like it almost felt like I was hiding a dirty secret when it really is just something that's normalized, but not talked about enough. And I think that problem is like, I always say like, it's just a big problem with like the education system in this country. Mm -hmm. Like not okay. some political, but like it, it's a problem. Like nobody teaches mental health in schools. You see like depictions of like OCD on TV as like you know cleaning and like yep. organizing things. And yes, but what else? Like there's more. There's well, more. I don't think I don't think the schools are equipped to teach regular schools, so they can't teach mental health. It almost is a societal problem that has to be fixed uh, outside of the school system and has to be noticed in the school system, hopefully by the educators who are in you in a classroom. But unfortunately, the teachers who graduated teacher school and, and you know, are, are teaching classrooms are not really knowledgeable in these subjects. Yeah. And we need more of that, like you say, in the schools, but we need a whole national health system. There's more, yeah. you know, it's not only young people. It's look at all the everywhere. people who are law. It's everywhere. It's, it's the people on the street who have mental illness. We've never had such a a large amount of this mm -hmm. as we see in uh, 2023. And I think it's a basically a, a, a breakdown in our society and in, in the norms. And we have to have some, I don't know who's going to fix it. We need it definitely Carrie, as you say, needs to be fixed. We have yeah. serious emotional problems out there and it, um, it, it goes across the board, young people, teenagers, uh, 30 somethings and it, and older Americans, which in another five years, they're going to be more people over 30, the 65 than uh, under 18. So you've got an aging population that also has mental stress. So this is a really a, a serious issue and a field that needs certainly more um, development and more support. So like crazy story. I've never told this to anyone publicly yet this week. I was getting ready for my book party at like the hair salon and next to me is the old psychologist at my high school who oh, I, wow. never saw, who I never saw at the time and like didn't really know me well and you know she was next to me and she's like you look really familiar and I was like yeah like you were the therapist at my old high school I actually never went to see you but like I, I wish I did at the time right because it would have helped and she's like oh you have a book coming out that's so cool what's it what's it about and I like to say it's about dating blah 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 and I was like but also like the last chapter focuses a lot on anxiety and OCD and I feel like you know th this really isn't being talked about at schools like I mean at my during my time at my high school like I didn't really learn any of this here I was kind of left to learn it all on my own and it was my own responsibility and I think I made her uncomfortable like, cause right. she knew. So I, I mentioned all this. I was like, you know, you guys have a really important job. You have a responsibility to teach people from an early age, like what it means to have like a mental health issue, what types of mental health issues. So I'm like going on and on and on, like trying to explain to her, like the responsibility she has. And it was, it went over her head. Correct. It was yeah, unbelievable. Because she's not really equipped to do it. And and that's what I'm Crazy. saying. I mean, this has got to be a revamping of yeah. thinking on mental health. And we haven't gotten there yet. We don't have people that are really, there, there are loads of people talking about it, loads of behavioral books on the subject, but we haven't really gotten it across the country. We have, we keep talking about it in, uh, what do you call it? Not really uh, in, 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 not in real terms, you know, they, they talk about it, but they don't put it into like in broad it. terms. Exactly. They yeah. don't exactly. Thank you, Kim. It's like, it's and it's they need to really insert it in, into the school systems, into every, into the workplace, everywhere where you're interacting with people and you have to deal with your emotional uh, well-being. And so I, I get what you're saying, Carrie. I, I don't know the answer. I think we need to do a lot more. Certainly. Yeah, I agree. And I guess at this point, we have to seek out our own help and kind of talk That's about not so it. Easy. It's not easy, but I think like 
Carrie, you're doing your part, writing about your experience and sharing and talking about it on podcasts. And at that, at this point in time, I think that's like all yeah. we can kind well, of that's, do uh, at our it's level. A first step. It's, it's a first, first step. step. It's a first, right. first step. We need a lot more we steps. More honesty. I think yeah. what grandma Gail was saying is like, so true. Like we talk about it in such like broad terms right. and you hear like, go to therapy, like mental health, go mental health. Yeah. You're not hearing, and it frustrates me so much, you're not hearing the specific situations people are going through. When you're going through anxiety, no matter what age, what does it feel like in your fingers and your toes? What are those specific thoughts Mm -hmm. going through your head? And sometimes those thoughts are scary. Sometimes it's scary to say what you're feeling, but like that's what needs to be done. That's what I try to do in this book. Like I I see everywhere, like go to therapy, blah, blah, blah. But why are we going to therapy? Like, what are those specific situations? That's what people need to hear in order to relate and to feel like they're not alone. Like, that's why it's so taboo because people are just not being specific about like what it means to have a mental health issue. Uh, totally. No, <laughs> that re- no, that totally resonates. And I agree. Um, well, let's get on to a lighter yeah, note. I have a fun <laughs> question. Right. If my real life rom-com were turned into a movie who would okay. you want to play the you and the lead roles mm. tv show is the goal okay oh, okay because i i want it to be like a gen z sex in the city i feel like each episode with a different guy okay okay, okay. Yep. who would i want to play me Ooh. let me think about this well i can't be taylor swift no. Why? Like a, Why not? She's too old now, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just right. someone I'm just... on the younger side, but not too young. You know, this is very random, but for some reason, it was the first person that came to my mind. I've never met her. I think we have a lot of mutual friends. Her name is Kylie Kentrall. This is going to be. I don't think so I know who that is. People listening to this are going to be like, "Where did that come from? You just pulled that out of a hat." I watch her. She's a she's a singer. She's on High School Musical, the musical. Okay. I follow her on TikTok. Oh wait, I watched that show. Which who did she play? She's on the recent season. Did you see the recent? Oh season? no, I think I'm still on like season two. Okay, uh, I was a catch up, Kim. <laughs> I'll tell you why. So she she can pass as young and also old. So it would be like very easy to take her through the ages. Time jump show, and I think I don't know. I I can see her like being fun and quirky which is like very me but also like serious and emotional like I've seen those sides to her as an actress she was she was on a Disney show I'm trying to think of the name oh god right. no, we'll google know. her after we'll google her. so at least you have a goal you know someone uh, you have in mind so that's terrific or she can audition for the role <laughs> she can audition yeah. I was also thinking like uh like a Kenzie Ziegler from like Dance Moms or something I don't, uh, I have to look up all these people. Oh my God. Who else is like a good young influencer? I was thinking like Jenna Ortega is like a big, like teen star, but I feel like her vibe and like my vibe just like don't match. So okay. maybe Jenna Ortega. I don't okay. know. I'll think about that one. They're good think options. About it. Think about it. Yeah. Um, um, in the spirit of rom-coms, what is your favorite? 10 things I hate about you. It's a good one. Have you seen that, Graham? No. Really? Why? I don't know. <laughs> it's just not on my, it's not on my Netflix channel right okay. now. It might be watch it. No, I'm, I'm much more into the murder mysteries. You know, I love every murder mystery. Okay. Well, that one's I'm not a murder. Building is my okay, favorite. I just, are you caught up? I'm, I'm, I'm just about. I'm caught up. I'm so I'm it. ahead of you. Wait, guys, uh, can I just say your reaction to the book is so much better than like my grandma. When why? She, How did she react? So I gave it to her, my my mom's mom passed away in March. So unfortunately she never got to read the book, but my dad's mom is like, you know, she's tough. Like she likes to present herself as tough. Okay. I gave her the book and I was like, all right, like, you know, read it. Tell me what you think. And she starts reading it. She's like, it's very personal. (laughs) And you would say the same thing. I, I understand where your grandma's coming from. You know, we talk about this all the time on the podcast, relationships right. and generational issues. So I'm sort of immune to any kind of uh, thing way out there. I understand right. where you're coming from. But for someone who's not conversed with this subject and who doesn't talk about dating as a teenager in a serious right. way, it really 
could be a little overwhelming and not very pleasant because they don't like their grandchild or grandson in trauma situations. It's not something yeah. that you like to see. And it could be very upsetting. I mean, I'm sort of, you know, I wouldn't know no, if I would have liked to have read about it when you were in high school, college already, I understood because you're an adult and you had made choices. But in high school, which is when Carrie really is talking about most of these experiences uh, and early college, it's hard because you don't think your child is going to be uh, up against these kind of disappointments mm -hmm. and you don't like to see it. So I, I, I feel for her, but she has to read <laughs> it and understand. Yes. I think she was just like shocked. by. Yeah, I'm sure she was vulnerable i'm being yeah. in it yeah. like the trauma, but just like the way i'm speaking about these experiences right. so loud, like you're very open about how you felt right like, yeah, that's the point like <laughs> that's what nobody's really doing right now that's kind of what i i wanted to do i wanted mm -hmm. it to be as raw and authentic as possible because that's what people are going to relate to right they're not going to relate to you know here's how you get over your first heartbreak time Right. Right. <laughs> well, no, people oh. relate to the more specific you are about your experience, people yeah. are going to really, even though it's like your experience and not someone else's, they're going to relate to it more than if you were broad or throwing out exactly what you were saying, like mm -hmm. well, make a bubble bath and light a candle. It's like, I don't. Well, that's the old way of thinking. Oh. <laughs> that's the old way of thinking. Yeah. It's so frustrating. There's a, a paragraph in my book. I think I posted it on Instagram about like getting over your first heartbreak. Like you can't just say like, you know, take a bath with a candle, eat some ice cream in bed. Right. Right. Sure. You can try. Sure. It might feel good in the moment, but heartbreak sucks. Heart, like, it certainly does, but it, it sucks at any age. Right. At any age. So it, yeah. it's what it's, it's, it's not generational. It hurts when you're 16, 30, 50, 80. It's never, never good. So yeah. what you're doing is terrific for the younger generation to understand that it happened to you. It's probably going to happen to thousands of others in the mm -hmm. same situation. And it gives you a feeling that you're not alone. See, mm -hmm. I think this is why your book is so important. Yes. And yeah. really great. Carrie, thank you so much for joining us. Tell everyone how they can buy the book and how they can follow you. So you can get the book. My real life rom-com is available now on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, Target, Ooh. basically anywhere you can get books. And you can follow me on all social media at Carrie Burke. Hope you guys liked the episode with Carrie. And everybody should really, who has a teenage child or um, uh, a, a young adult, should really purchase the book because it's, it's very thoughtful. And uh, she's a very bright young woman, uh, has written throughout. It's unbelievable. Her career in writing has been uh, over many years now. But this is the first time she's really um, putting her finger and foot in to a an adult topic yes and so i think it's well worth reading and um you know you, you just listen to her point of view and then if you get something out of it it's a wonderful thing if not you've just had an enjoyable read another great episode of excuse my grandma remember to follow us we're excuse my grandma on every platform and we'll see you soon bye